Our world is traveling toward its date with destiny. Signs indicate the last days are drawing near. No one knows the exact date or time, but today's headlines provide evidence that the Earth's time is short. Join us for the next half hour to discover what the Bible teaches us about the future. Welcome to Prophecy Watch. Maranatha, our Lord is coming. I am Dr. Charles L. Pack of Thy Kingdom Come Ministries, and this is Prophecy Watch, reaching all of North America by satellite and the world through the Internet. With me today is my friend and co-worker, Mr. Philip Goodman. Dr. Pack, it's very good to be with you today, and also, friends, to have you with us today on this special four-part series of Prophecy Watch. You know, Dr. Pack, many people are wondering what is going to happen in the future. Yes, and this series that we have on Prophecy Experts Answer Your Questions, you don't want to miss the next four programs that we're going to be having. So stay tuned and call your friends and have them to listen in because these are going to be amazing. All the experts that we have counseled as to what they believe about what's going to happen in the future. Now, how often have you wondered what's going to happen in the future? We are going to base ours on just what the Bible says. These men are Bible teachers on radio, television, authors, and so forth that are going to be talking to us, and it won't be based on the newspaper exegesis or what somebody else is saying about it, or it won't, won't even be on uh, what some man-made book. It's going to be what the Bible says. These men are going to be talking about it, Phil. Well, that's right, and you know the Bible is our source, the Word of God, so we're going to ask these prophecy experts, by the way, men who love the Word of God, and who are deeply involved in the study of it, and in particular Bible prophecy, we're going to ask them the most uh, often asked questions of prophecy, and we're going to take this series from the beginning of prophecy all the way through the return of Jesus up until His kingdom. Now, by the beginning of the prophecy, I mean end-time prophecy, where we're looking at the signs of the last days. As a matter of fact, friends, that's what our program is about today, the signs that show us that the return of Jesus is very, very near. And you know, Dr. Pack, many people out there are asking those very questions. What are the signs that Jesus is coming soon? Very soon, that's and right. And we've got some letters from some friends here, and I want to read one, and I know you have one there also, Dr. Yes, Pack. I do. I've got one here from uh, one of our friends in Oklahoma who says this. I enjoy Prophecy Watch. I am so glad to have a small part in helping. And friend, we're so glad that you're helping us with this program also. You keep watching. I have a letter here too, Phil, that this is from down in uh, Gasville, Arkansas, and this is the first time this person's ever written. They send a gift and they say, I just saw your program for the first time the other day and enjoyed it very much. We appreciate people like that who get a blessing out of just the first program and send us a gift, and we need your gift, so we appreciate your kindness in keeping us on your station down there. Phil? Well, you know, uh, Dr. Pack, I want to read a passage here out of Matthew chapter 24 to begin this series. Now again, friends, remember, we're talking about a four-part series. The first part that we're going to do today is the signs of the second coming of Jesus. What do we mean by signs? We mean events in the world that show that the return of Jesus is near. And it was Jesus himself who told us that we should be aware and recognize those signs. Matthew chapter 24, and let's go down to verse 32. It says, Now learn the parable of the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. Even so, you too, when you see all these things, recognize that he is near even at the door, that Jesus is near. Let's ask our first prophecy expert now the question that we're interested in today. What is the most important sign that the return of Jesus is near? This question is for Dr. Chuck Missler of Koinonia House, one of our prophecy experts today. What is the most important sign that the return of Jesus is near? Dr. Missler. Oh boy, there's so many. You see, I could say very glibly the, the fact that Israel's back in the land, the fact that the entire world is turning against them, that's all in prophecy. But actually, on our website, we monitor 10 strategic trends. The proliferation of uh, uh, you know, uh, weapons of mass destruction, uh, the rise of Islam, uh, the struggle for Jerusalem, the rise of a European superstate, uh, the rise of China as a superpower, um, the move towards global government, uh, the move towards ecumenical one-world religion, 
uh, champion of all by all of all people, the, the Vatican, you know, and so on. It isn't any one of these. It's every one of these. Uh, Jesus um, quoted an ancient seaman's proverb. When I went to the Naval Academy, I learned this proverb, you know, red sky in the morning, uh, sailor take a warning, red sky at night, sailor's delight. And then it startled me to realize that was an old proverb in the days of the gospel. And in Matthew 16, Jesus quotes that very proverb and then chides the Pharisees and Sadducees because they can discern the face of the sky, but they can't discern the signs of the times. And uh, if that was true for them, boy, it's even more true for us because there are so many um, prophecies that are uh, unrolling right before our eyes. In Jesus' first coming, there were over 300 details, that uh, specifications he fulfilled during his first advent. For every one of those, there are at least seven, some say eight. Um, for uh, second coming, over uh, J. Sidlow Baxter, I think, catalogs over 2,300. Um, and they're unfolding before us as we watch the Middle East, as we watch Europe, as we watch uh, uh, our own country, uh, and so on. So I think it's hard to put your finger on any one of these. I think the really overwhelming thing is that they're all moving towards that climax. Well, you know, Dr. Pack, uh, we heard what uh, Chuck Missler said on that, yes. and he quoted a passage out of Matthew chapter 16 that I think is very interesting, and you'll be aware of this because you and I have talked about it often. I'm going to read it here in just a minute, right. and then you may want to comment on it. All right. In Matthew chapter 16, uh, uh, Jesus uh, had this uh, question come from the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They came up, and they wanted him to show them a sign from heaven that he was indeed the Messiah. Look what Jesus said. He said, he answered them and he said, when it is evening, you say it will be fair weather for the sky is red. In other words, you can look up and see the sky, how obvious it is. And in the morning, there will be a storm today for the sky is red and threatening. Then he makes this comment. Do you not know how to discern the appearance of the sky? but you cannot discern the signs of the times. Now, what is that saying to us, Dr. Pack? Phil, we have lots of weather experts on television and radio today, and they know how to do that, but we don't have very many people who are just taking this book and showing people based upon what this book says. This is the book that we go by, not by the newspaper, not by other commentators, but what the Bible says. And, Phil, there's very few people that are doing that today. Exactly. Well, friends, you know... Uh, as we were uh, listening to Dr. Messler a while ago, Chuck Messler, he said he mentioned 10 strategic trends that point toward the second coming of Jesus. Some of those he mentioned was the overpopulated area of China, east of the Euphrates, which is mentioned in Revelation chapter 9 and Revelation chapter 16, that how that has emer emerged where the kings of the east will come from that area. He mentioned the rise of Europe and the um, reconvening or the revival of the old Roman Empire in the European Union today. He mentioned the, one, the move toward world unity, one world. And Dr. Pack, amazingly, the move toward a one world religion that we see even in the Bible Belt. This move toward ecumenism or one world religion or everybody can be saved on the same path. We have, we have churches that are trying to get together who have differences in doctrine. They don't believe the same thing, but they believe they ought to get together so they can be unified. We have that right here in Tulsa. The first Catholic church that joined the local council of churches was right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Exactly. And you know, friends, that tells us that people are willing to give up Bible truth so that they can just come together and tolerate everybody else's untruth and be one. That's right. And this is what we call a one world religion. Well, um, as Chuck Missler was discussing uh, the signs of the end times, remember what he said. He said it is not any one sign. He said it is the, it is the convergence of all of these signs at one point in history. Mm -hmm. And friends, we are that point in history. There has not been another generation that could have set its foot down in a Jewish, Jewish-controlled state of Israel other than our generation. There has not been another generation that could walk up and touch the stone walls of a Jewish-controlled Jerusalem. All of these are signs of the end days. And you know, Dr. Pack, if you were over in Israel and were go to, uh, to go to the airport at Tel Aviv and watch an airplane take off to Russia, it would be flying to the uttermost north. 
toward yes. Moscow. Yes, it Probably would. to pick up Jews and return them to Israel. That's right. But that is the land of Magog, one That's of the right. great signs of the end times. That's right. Amen. So I believe that. There are many of these signs that are emerging right now. Can you think of any others? Oh, there's lots of things. Not only the Jews going back to the land, but also the development of uh, the nations getting together, the churches getting together. Everything's going to be a one world thing. It's all happening. Uh, I'm amazed that the clothes that I'm wearing right now, the suit, the shirt, and tie, and everything, they all come from different different countries, Phil. Uh, they don't come to the United States. They're everywhere. Exactly. Well, you know, friends, we're going to continue on now with our next expert, and we're going to ask um, Dr. David Reagan of Lamb and Lion Ministries, another of our uh, experts. We call these people experts, by the way, because they believe in the Word of God, and they go in and they study it deeply with a believing heart. That's what makes a Bible expert. Well, we're going to ask Dr. David Reagan this question. What is the most important sign of the end times that Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 24? Why Matthew chapter 24? Because Jesus spent all of that chapter telling about the signs that would precede his return. Dr. Reagan. I think the most important sign is the regathering of the Jewish people from the four corners of the earth. This is something that the Puritans began to talk about over 400 years ago. They began to say, watch, by, uh, watch the Jew, because one day God's going to regather the Jew, and when that happens, the Messiah is going to come. People laugh, they scoff, they ridicule. They said the Jews will never, ever be back in that land. And people were laughing about that right up to the day that the Jews declared their independence on May the 14th, 1948. And even then, the skeptics said it'll be over with in a few days because the Arabs will annihilate them. The Mediterranean Sea will run uh, red in the blood of the Jews. Uh, it's just no way. But God said in Amos chapter 9, not only am I going to regather them, I'm going to put them in that land, and they will never be rooted up again. And so they're there, and I consider that to be the most important sign that uh, we are. In fact, there are three that relate to the Jews. Number one, they will come back to the land. Number two, they will reoccupy their city. And number three, the whole world will come against them over the issue of Jerusalem. And that's where we are right now. Well, friends, you heard again what Dr. Reagan had to say. He said, really, probably the preeminent sign that we have today, Dr. Pack, is the regathering of the Jews to the land of Israel. And, Phil, it's amazing to me that in 10 years' time, between 1990 and the year 2000, one million Jews went back into the land of Israel from Russia, the land of the north. It mentions that in Isaiah, it mentions it in Jeremiah and some of the other prophets, that they will come from the land of the north down to Israel. I have a Time magazine uh, written, uh, rather a Life magazine, written years ago, and it shows three million Jews are in Russia, and today one million of those have come down in to Israel. That's amazing. Well, it is amazing. And Dr. Pack, do you remember uh, how David Reagan, when we asked him that question, how he said that there were those who ridiculed the possibility that this was any kind of a sign of the second coming of Jesus? Yes. They ridiculed it, he said, right up until the day that Israel became a state in May of 1948. That's right. And <laughs> Phil, I'd like to add this too. A lot of people are asking, do you think that Israel is going to be able to stay there? Will the Arab people and the UN and the so forth, will they be able to get rid of the Jews that are there back in the land according to Bible prophecy? I have one verse. I want you to turn in your Bible, if you have your Bible there, and listen to it. In Amos chapter 9 and verse 15, Phil, here's mm -hmm. what God says. And, and you, you might remember David Reagan mentioned that also. Did he mention yes, that? He okay, did. and I want to read mm -hmm. this to them. And I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So there, I don't care what people say, that they're going to be driven into the sea, what the Arabs say, what the UN says, they're going to stay there right now, according to the Word of God. That's according to the Word of God. That's now right. here's another passage, friends, that we ought to look at in, the, in that regard. Go to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 11. Isaiah 11, 11 in your Bible, and look what it says here. It says, then it will happen on that day, That's, and the context tells us the day of the Lord or the return of Jesus, it will happen on that day that the Lord will again recover, listen to this, the second time with his hand, the remnant of his people who, who will remain, and then it tells about all the countries that they're going to come from. And when you get down to the end of verse 12, it says they come from the four corners of the earth. So he's going to recover them a second time, and they're going to live in eternal peace. 
Well, friends, the second time is when the Lord himself returns. In Matthew 24, it says he will send out angels to gather his elect from the four corners of the earth. But Israel comes back in two stages. They come back, first of all, in unbelief. That's the situation they live, live in now. And then they come back in belief. So the second time, we're in the first stage of the second time right now. Phil, I'd like mm -hmm. to mention this one. I used to go out in meetings in our motorhomes all the time. I used to say that one out of every four Jews in the world are back in the land today. Then I had to change that to one out of every three Jews in the world are back in the land. Now then I'd have to change it again yes. because they're going back to the land of Israel. A great sign of the end times. Well, again, now we're going to ask another one of our prophecy experts. And this one uh, is Grant Jeffrey, Dr. Grant Jeffrey of Frontier Research Publications, who is a prolific prophecy writer and a, and a real expert in this field. We're asking Dr. Graf, uh, Jeffrey this question, aside from Israel being the key sign, aside from Israel, what is the key sign that we are living in the last days? Dr. Jeffrey. Well, aside from Israel, there are a number of other signs that together, I think, very strongly indicate that we're coming close to the return of Christ. For example, I would not say one sign, but several, a coalition of them. In Revelation 11, we're told that when the two witnesses during the tribulation stand against the Antichrist, they're supernaturally sealed, but finally after they complete their mission and their supernatural protection is removed to allow Satan to kill them through the Antichrist, it says their bodies lie unburied on the streets of Jerusalem for three and a half days. It says the whole world holds a party, exchanges gifts, they're so happy that these tormentors of them are gone and the rains now can fall again. But this was impossible at any time up until the present generation when worldwide instantaneous television like CNN allows the whole world to watch an event. If this had taken place even in 1930, it would have taken a week for the news to go from Jerusalem to San Francisco. This is clearly a prophecy of worldwide communications in the generation when Christ returns. Daniel 12, 4 says that knowledge shall be increased when the vision was finally unfolded and that men would run to and fro. Knowledge has been static for almost 2,000 years. In 1850 in America, the technology was little improved upon from Rome. But all of a sudden, God turned a switch. Knowledge is increasing so rapidly now that the sum total of all scientific knowledge doubles every 24 months. From 35 miles an hour, the speed of a galloping horse, the fastest a man could go. We now can go 18,000 miles an hour in the space shuttle. These prophecies of modern technology, modern acceleration of learning, are very, very provocative and very convincing to me, in addition to the more central prophecies concerning the rebirth of the nation Israel, the revival of Hebrew, the restoration of the fertility of the land, etc., in the land of Israel. Well, I think it's very, it's fascinating, again, what Grant Jeffrey has said. He is kind of reaffirming what Chuck Missler said earlier, that there is no one sign, but there is a Con, uh, conflagr a conflagration of signs, you might say, or a convergence of signs in one point in history. And we're the only point in history living right now. Dr. Pack, I found one thing especially interesting what Dr. Jeffrey said there, and I want to turn over to Revelation chapter 11 just a minute. This is just one indication of the generation, the age that we live in, that is a key sign that Jesus is near. Revelation chapter 11, it tells us about the two witnesses okay. who will be on earth just before the return of Jesus. Two mm -hmm. witnesses, Jewish witnesses, mm -hmm. in the city of Jerusalem during the Great Tribulation. But look what it says in verse 9. It says, and those from the people and tribes and tongues and nations, in other words, everybody across the whole planet, the whole world, these two witnesses, by the way, are slain by the Antichrist on the streets of Jerusalem. Well, those across the whole world, it says in that passage, will look at their dead bodies for how long? For three and a half days. This is a point that Grant Jeffrey brought up, and will not permit their dead bodies to be laid in a tomb. Now, what does that tell us about the day that we live in, that people across the whole planet are able to look within a period of three and a half days in one spot on the planet. Phil, it is so amazing to me. The other day, my wife and I got on two telephones, she on one and me on the other one, and we dialed a number in Malawi, Africa, where my daughter is a missionary, 
And we spent 72 minutes talking to her and her husband on two other phones over there, just visiting back and forth like you and I are doing right here. That's amazing Mm -hmm. to me. But, you know, we get phone calls from foreign countries, and they call us up and ask questions and want our paper and so forth. It's amazing what a a time we live in. And it's based on Daniel 12, and I'd like to read that in Daniel 12, Mm -hmm. verse 4. Notice what it says here in Daniel 12, 4. It says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, that is, the book of Daniel, even to the time of the end. Now, are we living in the time of the end? Here's two of the signs of the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Phil, I've been to Israel 25 times. Mm-hmm. I couldn't believe a farm mm-hmm. boy like me going to Israel 25 times. And I've been to 26 countries. Yes. I can't believe that. And then it says, and knowledge shall be increased. And that's what we're talking about. Knowledge is being increased. It's just exploding. It's exactly. amazing what's happening. And you travel have a little with thing it. right over there yes. that you just got mm-hmm. this morning. The most mm-hmm. amazing. Show them Show them that little instrument there. What all little radio do? frequency thing that our television producer has uh, uh, let us use here to use uh, to change PowerPoint presentations from uh, behind walls. Yes, you, can behind, you go, up, go here to the next mm-hmm. door and it'll work there. And also it has a, a, a device to shoot your uh, red dots on the wall with yes, everything. It's exactly. Amazing. Laser beam. Laser beam. Yes. Well, uh, you know, Dr. Pack, uh, Grant Jeffrey made the comment on that passage that you just read yeah, out of Daniel that knowledge will increase in the end days. He made the comment that knowledge is increasing every 24 months. That's amazing. It's doubling. That's amazing. Doubling every 24 months. That is an amazing fact. Now, friends, another key sign of the end days, by the way, is the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. It is ready to be rebuilt, but something has to happen. Let's ask Dr. Randall Price of World of the Bible Ministries, another one of our Bible experts. Let's ask him this question. What must occur for the temple to be rebuilt? Dr. Price. Well, for the rebuilding of the temple to take place, uh, there has to be access to the Temple Mount compound, which is a 35-acre site. And uh, in order for that to take place, there has to be the removal of Islam from the site because the Muslims uh, not only demand uh, that no one who is a non-Muslim have any religious expression there, they've also banned anyone from the site who is non-Muslim. So at this point in time, uh, Jews, uh, whether they're secular or orthodox, have no access whatsoever to that site, not even to pray, much less build a temple. So the most significant thing that's going to happen is some kind of political move in which Jews not only have access to the site, but have sovereignty over the site. In 1967, when they took that site and legitimately captured it, uh, they could have had sovereignty over the site, but they chose not to do that because of the fear of the other Arab nations, uh, particularly Muslim countries. So they gave the jurisdiction and control of the site to the Muslim authorities. Uh, Even though they claim sovereignty over the city, that one spot really was outside their jurisdiction. So they're going to have to change things. They're going to have to remove the Muslim presence because otherwise they'll never have uh, sovereignty on the site. So when we see a a Jewish presence established over the Temple Mount, uh, then I believe we're finally at that point in the prophetic clock where the Jews will be able to assert themselves. and At some point, there's going to be either a diplomatic covenant of some sort made to make that possible. And that's what Daniel 9.27 uh, speaks very clearly about. Dr. Pack, again, it is startling what is happening over in Jerusalem, according to Dr. Price. Now, let's, let's clue our friends in about what's going on here. We've got a temple mount on 35 acres of real estate. That is where the temple, the second temple that during the time of Jesus set until it was destroyed in 70 A.D. The Bible says it will be rebuilt just prior to the second coming of Jesus. Dr. Price tells us that the only obstacle right now, and it's a major obstacle, mm-hmm is the removal of Islamic presence from that Temple from Mount. That temple Mount, that's right. Mm-hmm. And Phil, here's a book they need to get by Dr. Price. This little book right here is called 
fast facts on the Middle East. Fast facts on the Middle East. This is the most amazing, concise little book about the whole thing in the Middle East. And you can have this for only $15 postpaid by Randall Price that you just heard. And to me, I've been on a tour with him. He was our guide on one of the tours yes, that I uh -huh. made. So he's really a very important man as far as these things are concerned. Absolutely. And perhaps well, you have something else to say about that. Well, too. I want to say this about this book right here. You mentioned uh, what a terrific book this is. Friends, this is also a terrific read. It is an easy read. Any questions you have on the Middle East, it gives you fast quotes, it gives you graphs and maps and all kinds of uh, helpful information that you can read very quickly. Now, I want to say this about what Dr. Price said. He said that the Jews must have sovereignty over the Temple Mount for the Temple to be rebuilt. And at any moment, that could happen. Have you heard, Dr. Pack, about the potential for those temple uh, retainer walls to collapse around they're there? They're saying they could collapse any time. Any time. Yes. They have become weakened. Yes. Let me read this passage out of Daniel 9.27. This tells us why the Jews must have sovereignty. Daniel, Daniel 9.27. And he, that is the Antichrist, will make a firm covenant or agreement with the many, that is the Jews, for a period of one week, it says. That means seven years. In other words, the final seven years of this age, the Antichrist is going to come in Jerusalem, and he's going to make a treaty with the Jews that they can rebuild the temple. How do we know they're talking about the temple? Because it says in the middle of that week, or halfway through that seven years, he will put a stop to sacrifice and grain offering. The only place that could occur is in a rebuilt temple. Mm -hmm. Amen. Phil, I want to tell the folks how they can get this now. We're going to have this on VHS, which you can play on your television. These four messages now that you're going to hear, you can also get it on uh, a uh, DVD. We have a DVD and a CD, and you can get it that way. So you must remember that we want to share these things with you. For and uh, $25, we'll, I think. $25 each, uh -huh. for each one. That, that's all four of these messages. You're hearing one of them now. There's going to be three more. And then if you're out there and you've never received the Lord Jesus as your Savior, I tell you, the signs of the times indicate that we're coming to the end of the age. And I, we have a little booklet here called Finding Your Way. If you're not sure that you're saved, we'd like to send this to you. This will tell you how to be saved. It has diagrams and charts in it, and it also has the whole Gospel of John in it. You can read the Gospel of John and know whether you're saved or not. We hope that you'll do that. The Bible says in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Have you seen the Passion Play, the Passion Movie? God so loved the world that he did that in order that you might have everlasting life. If you're not a Christian, why don't you bow your head right now and receive the Lord Jesus. Tell God in heaven you're doing that, and then write and tell us about it. God bless you.